Hey guys, this is Lucy Town Designs. Um, so before we really start doing the deep dive into some of the clothing that my great grandmother was making in her diaries in the 1920s, um, let's go a couple of decades younger um, from the 1930s and 1940s. This is a massive collection of mine. Um, it's all thread crochet. And I acquired this um, back when I was doing a lot of historical reenactment work. And a family was cleaning out their attic and discovered all of these thread crochet books. And they thought that I would really enjoy and appreciate them. So. I thought that this would be a great lookbook thing. So this one is just crochet stitches. I'm not quite sure of the year on this particular one. A lot of them are 1930s to 1940s. So this one is 1945 Spool Cotton Company. Just a little bit of a beehive flower motif. This one I think is an Elizabeth Hiddleston pattern, which is from the 1950s, I believe. So this one is a doily thread crochet pattern. And another doily pattern book for, that you could get for 10 cents. 1940, the Spool Cotton Company. These next three books are the Elizabeth Hiddleston books. They are all thread crochet. Okay, excuse me, 1981, not 1950. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is volume 25, an original creations in crochet. I have a version of this uh, violet doily that, the, that my mother made, actually. And then this one is another crochet originals. Yep, this one is another Elizabeth Hiddleston book pattern, a photocopy. And I have a bunch of random loose leaf pages, and the family that gave these to me, it looks like the woman who did all of this, she would just tear out the pages that she wanted to work on or she would give them to people to make, or people would give them to her to make. So this would be a doily luncheon set. This book, I'm not quite sure what the year is, I'm guessing probably late 40s, early 50s. We do actually have some color in here. Including that print. So very 1950s, 1960s. And I'm not sure, but I think I think that might be, not sure if that's a Lucille Ball 
episode on the television or not. A very mid-century modern decor, decor in that book. <coughs> And then we have Annie Macassar projects. Those get it get the name from a type of hair oil that was called Macassar oil, I believe, that men would use for slicking their hair back. And the Annie Macassars were actually really uh, practical pieces that you could make. They were removable um, furnishings so that you could have some sort of protection between the guy's hair and your furniture and it was a lot easier to just take this off and run it through the wash than trying to clean all that oil off a hef pretty hefty set of furniture. And we have a couple of different, several different tablecloth patterns. In 1918, for my great-grandma's diary, she talks about cutting out a luncheon set. And I'm wondering if this could work. I have a couple of others that I want to try out for that. I have that one. That could be very pretty. And it would be pretty quick to do this one, I feel. So that is definitely an option. And we have some Royal Society books. We have a lot of Coates and Clark books. We have a lot of School Cotton Company books. And yes, these are in very bad shape. This one is 1949 by the way. And these started off at 10 cents and by about 1950 they were being sold for 25 cents. <coughs> and they are absolutely falling apart. This one I feel could be really good if you were to use something like um, the North Shore yarn from Cascade Yarns. It's a bit, probably, I want to say, probably the equivalent of somewhere between the size 5 crochet cotton and sock yarn. Um, it, it's definitely more of a mercerized cotton feel if you could get that to work for acrylic yarn. That is what the North Shore yarn from Cascade Yarns feels like. And I think that that could be a really pretty yarn to use in this. We have more tablecloths. One thing that, one trick that I love to do is I love to take modern weight yarn and do a square of these. They're essentially granny squares. And then if you use the modern weight yarn, the sport weight and thicker yarn into the worsted weights, and even thicker, you get one of these for is absolutely serviceable for both the front and the back of a sweater. For an adult size small sweater, that is. Um, and then you can use a one per sleeve. I've done that. It turns out very, very pretty. Unfortunately, I do not have any around to model. Another demi tasse service pattern. 
This is size 30, which is, excuse me, size 50. So we're working with sewing thread weight here. Right. I'm feeling like this one could also work for the luncheon set that my great grandma and her mother in law worked on. There's the pattern for it. Let's put that in the possibilities pile. I'm noticing about these patterns is that except for this one which takes about one yard of linen you could absolutely use scrap cloth for another animacassar set spreads, more luncheon sets. More luncheons, more bed spreads, excuse me, chair sets. So this one looks like a Coates and Clark. This one doesn't have any date for it. The thing that I do appreciate is that instead of charts like what we would normally expect, we do have very, very clear close-up photographs, which makes things a lot easier, even if you just have the up-close ones and you can understand the stitches from just a photograph. Another tablecloth. Bed spreads. Chairs. In 1920, my great grandmother talks about library scarves and crocheting on library scarves and I'm wondering if that's what she was talking about, just the long dresser scarf. <clears throat> More bed spreads. Bed bedroom sets. And then this one would make such a lovely blouse and sleeve pattern. With the little Irish crochet rose in the center. This is cobweb lace. I'm using a size eight and nine. Crochet hooks and the lace work. More crochet instructions. Now we're getting into fillet crochet work. One thing that my great grandmother always talks about in 1918 is an illet centerpiece, I-L-I, or excuse me, I-L-E-T centerpiece, and I'm wondering if she's talking about a filet crochet centerpiece. And more
granny square work, tablecloth work, diagram for joining hexagon motifs. This one looks like Okay. Oh. Okay, this one does not have a company for it. Bed spreads, more chair sets. That can be really pretty in white, mercerized acrylic. Or doilies. These look like they can go pretty quickly. Or tablecloth patterns. That is all entirely fillet crochet. It would take years to do that. It would take years to do it most of these projects. This could be a really pretty beret pattern. As could that. We have more table sets. This one is 1941 Coats and Clark. Is there any date on this? No, there's not a date on this one. More Coats and Clark table sets. Now we're getting into pineapple crochet patterns. Those are very, very classic. They really start taking off about the 1930s, 1940s. And this one is 1943. Here's another table set where they've just taken a big bit of linen and then crocheted around it. It would still take a long time, but not nearly as long as doing the entire tablecloth with the fillet crochet. That corner is stunning. Wow. More of a picnic basket, cloth, kitchen checks. I wonder if this would be good for Tunisian crochet work. Another very casual dining set in comparison with the rest of what we've been seeing. Um, more Irish crochet pieces. Mm. Okay, now we're getting into gauge work. A lot of early patterns don't have gauges included, which is stitches per inch. Okay, fillet centerpiece. Fillet centerpiece, fillet centerpiece. I'm wondering if this isn't what my great-grandmother was talking about. This could work. That one definitely could work.
and cobwebby. These would also be absolutely beautiful for sweaters or blouses. Now, now we're getting into... We're starting to see the beginnings of the type of granny square crochet that was really popular in the 70s for clothing with how this luncheon set is being constructed. Tea cloth, a bread tray doily, muffin cozy. And again, we're looking at things where you are being expected to almost be able to use up your scraps of fabric. <clears throat> More tables. This is 1939. Coats and Clark, again. Absolutely stunning butterfly. Morning Glory. Wow. Okay, this is a filet crochet project for St. George and the Dragon. Interesting. So, more, I feel like you could almost use linen for this, even though it is not constructed that way, and you can definitely see the zeitgeist language, the language of the time, um, with the wording here. Oh, wow. Another one that could be really pretty for a blouse. And again, a bit of a quirky blouse. More vine work and pillow crochet. These are, this is just the corner of a larger bit of table linen. This what I've done. Um, it is a Queen's, Queen Anne's lace motif. This is 1940, 1939, but I have a copy of this motif from a pattern book published in the 1970s. So a lot of these are a very timeless pattern. <clears throat> and again, we're seeing that you're being expected to use almost scraps, if you can. And if not, then fat quarters. That would be absolutely beautiful in the blouse as well. And then another chair set. Alright, well I hope that you enjoy looking through these with me. And yeah, let me know if you think that that could be a 
different way of the history bounding approach by utilizing old table pat um cloth and bedspread patterns for blouses. So I'll see you all in the next video.